You're listening to the awesome podcast where we celebrate the achievement and lessons of women owned food and beverage manufacturing companies in Canada. You're tuning into our session with Paula Bellavance, who owns Basic Roots. Basic Roots never started out to be a company. Like we didn't sit down and have a business plan or all those wonderful things all laid out. I was just making some product from home for uh, someone because we started out as a 100% natural raw food company making bars, cookies, crackers. And we got approached by a local store that had a number of stores in Calgary. One of their people happened to be somewhere. We were just at a potluck, basically, and asked if they could take our product on. And I was like, no, we're not a company. <laughs> like We're just doing this. Anyways, they pushed and they were very supportive. And we got a small kitchen because really I was just making stuff from my home because it wasn't a business. So we got a small kitchen, uh, said, OK, well, let's give this a go. But it was so fast and so instantaneous. It just happened. And then word got out. And before we knew it, basically a broker reached out to us and we had two small cheeses at the time. They were just the cream cheese. And when we sat down to do the numbers, that was the beginning of, oh my gosh, what have we done? What's going on? Like This is pure chaos, really. And then realized, you know, the labor was so high with it that there was no way we could go into distribution. The margins just weren't there at that level. Having no idea the costs of doing distribution, doing all of those things. So they helped guide us a little bit and said, okay, go with the cheeses. So we had to do a major pivot. Well, that was probably about three, three years into it. And again, still had no business plan because we were just constantly in production. We weren't a huge team. We were really small. And it just kept growing from that point. Then I tried trying to find somebody who was just like, we can't, we can't keep up with this and, and trying to find a co-packer. We ended up at LeDuc who said, no, like we can't do that here, one, because we're not free. And then that's what continued to happen. We can't take you on. We're not free. Plus, Canada in itself just doesn't have a lot of manufacturing, right? It's, it's not like the U.S. I was trying to reach out, do different things, find a mentor, which was really difficult, too. They were like, well, you're fermenting. You're, you're, you're doing stuff that we can't help you. We don't know how to guide you with this. But, you know, when you get it all figured out, you can come back and mentor for us. So it was like, OK, that's not helpful. So we continued along and really we reached a point where I thought, I can't do this. I, I'm going to I need to shut things down. Like, I, I just I can't. And then somebody else who was doing chocolate, another entrepreneur that I knew, said, well, why don't you check out Awesome in Saskatoon? And I said, what is that? Who is that? That was the beginning of, oh my gosh, right? <laughs> like, there's something else. I think Muriel was, was running it at the time and was just super supportive, had great conversations with her. So here we are. And, and deconstructing. And really, we are just now breaking everything down. We didn't have social media. We didn't have anything. So, you know, basically nine years later, we're now just doing all of that. So we kind of jumped into the gate, into distribution, which everybody would love to have, and had to deconstruct and go back to the very beginning in the midst of being in distribution. We strictly do vegan cheese. We have four spreads. We have a feta and we have a, uh, a brie that actually has a traditional brie rind on it. And everything is made from cashews. Just because of the nature, we have equipment like in order to do that, you're looking at time frames. Like for the brie, from start to finish, it's approximately three weeks. So to try and get a co-packer to do that, they can't. And the feta, the same thing. We had to have custom equipment made. 
to accommodate that, get the texture that we were looking for, because we make the product to try and taste as real as a traditional cream cheese, feta, and and the brie. We had to do a move to to make it to be in a kitchen that was more conducive to going through that process, which we're in the midst of of doing right now. We needed to get HACCP. And the kitchen that we were in, as much as we loved it, and it was a great location, financially, it just didn't make sense to do a HACCP kitchen in there. But just for a lot of the bigger stores, you need to have that in order to to be in there, especially because of the nature of what our product is. When you look at something like a a plant-based spread, And especially if you're using higher end ingredients, we made the choice at the very beginning that we wanted it to be 100% natural. We tried to stay away from gums. I know that gums, and there's argument for all of that, it's just keeping it as pure food as possible. That brings challenges on, keeping it organic. And then you learn along the way too. I mean, cashews by nature are non-GMO. And a lot of what we use is, and then we had to make a decision to go from organic to non-GMO. That is a higher focus for us. To keep our price point at a decent level, you have to make some hardcore choices sometimes regarding those those raw ingredients and, and having to look at what is conventional compared to this, what is this compared to this. And that's a lot from a price point. The organic element of it is definitely another huge thing for marketing, though, too, right? So you have all these different balls that you're trying to juggle and make choices that way. For us, it was just staying true, right? Because then you're, you're watching other product and you can't do that. You have to go, this is who we are. This is what our niche is and stay true to the path that you've chosen. There was a lot of logistics that we just had not planned out. So yeah, a business plan, but also I would have hired somebody had I known to help guide us, like someone who understands the strategy and specifically around food. We did have someone that helped a little bit, but their forte was paint. They were like, no, you know, distribution is distribution. And it's like, no, it's not. Food is a whole different ball game. So yeah, a hundred percent. But I I would have hired someone who had a better understanding to help us even do that business plan. I would not have done it on my own. I would say my number one lesson is you can't do it all. You absolutely cannot do it all. And when you're first starting out, you think that you have all your dots and you think that you have, but it's, it's such a constant evolution and you have to be able to pivot. And with food, you have to be able to pivot quickly because the landscape is just constantly changing, like from regulations and then boom, you've got a pandemic that is playing into it. And because of how everything happened and it just went boom for us, I just went into motion of perpetual motion like a hamster. I was working 14, 16 hour days, seven days a week, because I didn't know what I didn't know and trying to get paperwork done and understand the logistics of a lot of this stuff. That would be my number one thing is you need to reach out and you need to have other people who know more than you do in certain areas, whether it be finance, whether it be the marketing, whether it be the production itself and the creation of those products. I've since discovered meditation (laughs) in the last two years, which people would always tell me, do that, do that. And it's just like, oh my gosh, are you kidding I can't stop my brain, never mind do something like that. And so I've learned to do it because then I realized, okay, there's different modalities uh, that you can use for meditation. It's not just, you know, sitting there cross-legged. So it's just re-brain talk, right? And calming myself and I'll remove myself because there's always something that's happening. And I've just learned you need to take five minutes even and just remove and breathe decompress and getting that airflow back to the brain. I know it sounds very cliche, but it does work. A hot bath at the end of the day, there's time for that. But it it really is just for me, calming my brain, stepping away just long enough and breathing techniques that I've used. I think it's different for different people. You know, you're going to feel it in a different way. For me, 
I can literally feel it in my heart, right? When my heart starts to elevate a little bit and race, it's like, okay, it's time. And I've learned too that you have to take that time or you're not making good decisions. You're not in rational brain when that starts happening. You're, you're an emotional brain. You're not in thinking brain. And I've learned that the hard way too. Emotional <laughs> brain does not get you to, to where you need to be. It does not um, create healthy relationship within the work environment. And you just don't make good choices from emotional brain. Awesome was a lifeline. It truly was a lifeline because all the things that I was finding on Google again was, okay, you know, you could look at a co-packer, you could look at this, you could look at this, like just trying to become more cost effective, understanding the logistics of distribution. The information was there. It was just, I physically needed someone who was there and I could call and say, okay, this is what's happening. We're having issues with with pH and that's how it all kind of came down. And then I got even more information like from the conference. So I will never miss one again because it just added so much value. And then you hear and you watch comments and and you just get so much other information from other people. They may not be doing exactly what you're doing, but a lot of the issues are, are still the same. It's just, it is a gift. It's a gift. And I just have such great gratitude for the person that gave me your contact information and the information that I get. Everything is kind of under one roof and there's other guidance. If they don't have what you need, there's guidance to help you get there because trying to find other people, it comes at a cost. And when you're a new start, you don't have that funding for that. That is the biggest lesson that I've learned is taking advantage of what's available out there because there's a lot of wisdom and guidance and a lot of aha moments going, really, that's available? We can't be an island. (laughs) Thank you for listening to the awesome podcast where we celebrate the achievement and lessons of women-owned food and beverage manufacturing companies in Canada. Learn more about our community at beawesome.ca.